Hello and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we've got another exciting bolt action video for you. Warlord Games have given us their new intelligence briefing. They've dropped the V3 shooting rules and let me tell you, things are looking great. So yes, chaps, we've got the news we've all been waiting for. The new shooting rules for version 3. Now, things are looking to be carrying on in an absolutely fantastic direction. And as a long-time Bolt Action player, who's played 1st Edition, 2nd Edition, I can honestly say at this point, I'm very confident that version 3 is going to be the best version of Bolt Action that I have ever played. So I'm not going to waffle on for ages. Let's dive right in and see what the changes are. And I'm going to highlight to you guys the devils in the detail, the little bits that are going to make a big difference to our gaming experience. So straight off the bat, the shooting procedure is very familiar. You're going to declare your target. They're going to get a chance to react, such as down or recce. You're going to measure that range and open fire. So of course, no pre-measuring as we're used to, as is only right and proper in a gentleman's game. Then you're going to roll to hit. Then you're going to roll to damage. The target's going to take their cover saves. Then they're going to take casualties. And then they're going to check morale. So that could be morale every time you take casualties. Uh, it's not clear. I feel like it's going to have the caveat when we see the full rules of if you've taken 50% or more, just as usual, and they've just got it in the sequence. But Leaves a, leave that is an open question. We can't possibly say that for sure. Now, one thing they have confirmed that slots into this shooting procedure is that if you take a hit, regardless of your cover saves, you take a pin. There's no saving pins. Okay. On the other th side of things, or on top of that, you might say, your base hit is now a four up, people. Okay. So, that makes so much sense in our playtesting. Me and JP, if you're not already aware, we've got a couple of battle reports out that we've released over the last couple of weeks of Bolt Action 2.5, as we've called it, where we've combined the newly released rules with the second edition rules. Uh, just to get a feel for things, one might say. And the, what we're thoroughly pleased about is that we playtested basically the same ideas here uh, just transferring the um, some of the hit modifiers over to a cover save. So you've essentially got two. You're not just front loading the modifiers. You've got the modifiers split be between the front and back end. And so if you want to check that out and kind of see, we're not quite right. We are using a baseline of a three up. We're giving negatives for over half range. That's not part of it, which I'll say in a second. But overall, if you want to get a feel for things, you want to see these rules in action alongside the new platoons, I'll leave the link in the description below and you can see it for yourself. But yes, let's, with I've sort of hinted at, let's dive straight back into the hit modifiers table. Now, you get a minus one for firing on the move, makes sense. You get a minus one if you are pinned, but no longer per pin. So, as we sort of look at the rules we already know, you hit on a four up, there's no avoiding taking that pin. But, Getting stacked with pins, three, four pins, doesn't negate your shooting ability any further. Once you've got a pin on you, you're taking a minus one and that's it. That doesn't mean you're going to follow orders and that makes sense to me. You know, if you're taking fire and you have to sort of brace yourself, get up and get some rounds off uh, back down range and the incoming fire is affecting you then, it doesn't matter how much fire, incoming fire you're taking, really. What is going to affect you in terms of the weight of incoming fire is whether you uh, pop your head up in the first place, whether you follow that order. So that makes perfect sense to me. A max of a minus one negative if you're pinned, regardless of number of pins. Big, big change. We're going to discuss that further uh, later on once we've discuss, discussed uh, all of the changes. So we'll go into that in more detail in a second. Now... The fire is inexperienced, is still minus one. Now, this is interesting because they've taken out so many modifiers. That's the last negative modifier. So as I mentioned previously, there's no negative for shooting over half range anymore. Now, I 
if I would have thought um, that they, if they were stripping it down this bare, which is great, by the way, and I'll talk about why in a second, I would have thought they kept the range one bef uh, and dropped the inexperienced one. But in hindsight, that's what I was presuming. In hindsight, and after reading the, uh, the intelligence briefing, it makes a lot more sense the way they've settled on it. So they're trying to streamline the rules, but maintain or even increase the level of strategic and tactical uh, nuance, so to speak. So streamlining the rules, that means streamlining gameplay, and they've got an extra role in here. So, you know, more rolling of dice, more steps, naturally one would presume that's going to double the amount of time it takes to activate a particular unit. But in fact, there's lots of little bits that slow down that. It's getting the math slightly wrong the first time, they're going, oh yeah, sorry, yeah, over half range, six followed by six or something like that. Oh yeah, of course, small target, we forgot about that. You have a little chuckle and oh, that's 10 seconds gone. On top of that, you know a unit's in range, like that heavy artillery piece is defo within 72 inches. You're like you can tell, okay, because they're both on the board. <laughs> so with that in mind, it's a waste of time measuring to see if it's within half range. It's just if you're in range, you can shoot. So it's trimming down the amount of re-measuring you have to do. Okay, if a unit's already shot at something and that unit's moved closer to it, is it still within half range? Is it now within half range when before it was over half range? Doesn't matter. Okay, doesn't matter. So I love that. That's a really good quality of life adjustment and it also makes sense i mean we're looking at you know rifles that had a you know a battle range of sort of 300 yards plus um and early on in the war you know you're talking field guns that would frequently knock out tanks at a kilometer's range in some cases depending on the field gun and the armored vehicle it's shooting at and we by no means represent the long range shots on a six by four table it's all close range really so you can just think of this as are you within effective range where you're not going to miss that shot allowing for the variables or you're not in effective range in which case nine times out of ten you will miss that shot and it would be lucky in terms of look so all these changes make perfect sense in my mind from a quality of life gameplay perspective and from a simple uh, historic reenactment game perspective, if that makes sense. It just all makes sense to me. And I'll, I'll sort of double down on that point by saying that I agree once again with taking the pins before you roll for the cover save. Because if you're behind a wall or you're behind a, a wooden stump in a ditch, and those rat the cover is saving you from rounds that would have otherwise struck you. Those rounds are going to be cracking into that cover. You're going to be hit by shrapnel clods of dirt. Maybe nothing, not enough to cause make you become a casualty. But you, you're pinned. You're pinned. That's make no doubt about that. So, you know, again, historic reenactment perspective, great. Quality of life perspective, great. It's just two thumbs up from me so far for these changes. One thing I didn't mention is that being in point blank now is plus two. Plus two. That is a big deal. Now, that just again makes so much sense, especially in light of me, uh, JP and my playtesting on the recent battle reports. Because tanks really needed a helping hand. We've come to sort of realise here. Um, but tanks are the most likely vehicle to get into, or unit to get into point blank range, I would say, or a unit that you can plan to get into point blank range and shoot, you know, that's what it does, just get right up to that cover and just hose them down with the machine guns. Yeah, you get half the number of shots, but now if you're in that point blank, point blank, you've still got a buff, plus two to hit. So you can be hitting on twos, still, just like you should be able, just like previous editions, with the base being a four. However, you're firing a much less shots, just three shots from any single machine gun that's hull mounted. So they're putting out less shots, but 
they get that pin straight away, so they're really good at suppressing infantry. They just have to look at infantry, spray a few shots in their direction. More than likely, they're going to get that hit on three to six dice, give or take. Then on top of that, if they want to get right up close with, and they're a DACA tank, then DACA tanks are going to have to get in your face to be effective because they're now on half the number of shots. But they can be more effective than anything else and not really be at risk of incoming fire from small arms. So you can still pull off some of your old maneuvers. You're just going to have to play more tactically. Again, that's great. That's two thumbs up. That's a streamlined and yet more tactically intricate way of doing things. Considering we have sixes followed by sixes in the game and I'm confident they're going to stay because Warlord has explicitly told us when significant rules that play into the phase they're talking about have been removed. So they told us talking about MGs that small target had been removed, for example. Um, they told us that exceptional damage had been removed. They explicitly told us that. They haven't said they've explicitly removed needing a six followed by a six to hit. Maybe they've changed the second number. It might be a six followed by a two, a six followed by a four. Who knows? But they've definitely got those re-rolls to hit in there. Okay, negative re-rolls to hit, one might say. And you can hit that quite easily. If you've got an inexperienced squad, they've taken a pin. So start on a four, then up to a five for being inexperienced. Six for having a pin on them. And then if they move and shoot, six is followed by sixes. So we're pretty confident that's the case. Now let's go into the cover save straight away. Now, as we can see on the next table here, that soft cover is a base of five up. Hard cover is a base of four up. And if you have no cover, you can go down for a plus two modifier. So if you've no save, it becomes a five up. Soft cover makes it a three up. And if you're down in hard cover, you have a two up save so all in all as an overview of the shooting updates you start on a four up you only take a minus one for a firing on the move if you've taken any number of pins or if you're an experienced however you get a plus two modifier if you're within point blank after rolling for damage as normal the cover saves table um allows you to get a five up save as the target if you're in soft cover, a four up in hard cover, and a five up in the open if you go down, updated to a three up or two up in soft and hard cover respectively if you go down in one of those types of cover. And, and on top of that, you own, as the firer, you only need to hit to do pins to the target regardless of damage regardless of cover save so just the same as it's always been when you say it like that you only need to hit to do a pin it's exactly the same as it's always been okay great now what are the implications of all this gentlemen well first thing i would say is is there a negative to being over half range for penetration value now we haven't we never explicitly had half range values on the profiles of weapons so it doesn't necessarily mean because we're talking about shooting and not damage here that we don't still have that but it seems now like we know the writing on the wall here for warlord we can we can we know what they're going for here we can see the lay of the land ahead um, they've got a clear ethos when writing these rules and updating these rules and so I don't know why they'd make us raw measure to see if we're within half range or over half range uh, for the penetration value of anti-tank weapons. So for me, it's just going to be, and that's another minor buff to tanks. Okay, yes to artillery pieces as well, but a lot of artillery's howitzers and that doesn't really matter anyway. So this really only buffs field guns, which need a buff because most people take howitzers so field guns, and tanks who, from the previous... Uh, intelligence briefings were getting gradually nerfed and needed a comeback which this represents so that means they're always going to be firing uh, at full capacity essentially we can presume we don't know we can presume now another question that comes to mind is will we have a re-roll to a two-up save coming into the game now i know some of you might already be typing angrily when i 
utter such words because we're not playing 40k we're playing bolt action and some of us have good reason for playing bolt action over 40k and a lot of it might be to do with infinite re-rolls which we don't want <laughs> now why might it be the case well hear me out we know that some units give a buff of plus one to cover we've seen that rule that was what let us know that cover saves were even going to exist and what we play tested in the last couple of battle reports so if that's the case if you're already on a two up down in hard cover and you've got a plus one to your cover save do you just stay on a flat two that's not how warlord have done it in the past if you're on a six it doesn't just stay at a six you roll a six followed by a six could it be a two up followed by a six up i very much doubt it's a two up followed by a two up i actually in fact doubt that it's part of the game but i think it's something that could well be the case because of the way warlord sometimes writes their rules now, one thing I would definitely mention is that I feel like the HE rules are in some way going to change at this point. The reason why I mention this is because we've got our field guns. We've got way more field guns. We've got way more tanks. We've got way more of those big shots. In bolt action, second edition and first edition, of course, you might only have at the most, if you're really playing into some big guns, you might only have four or five big dice rolls if that makes sense yeah you've got your mortar oh does the mortar hit on a six up or a five up or whatever oh does my howitzer hit oh does my tank hit with its you know super heavy anti-tank gun if you've got tiger for example i don't know oh does your nebel worth it but you've got those big dice that but you get way fewer of that fewer of those compared to just your general small arms now we're going to have a lot more of these big dice we're going to have more units as well admittedly but those big dice are going to be hitting way more consistently and because of that i feel like the amount of damage that they can do might in some way be reduced so we're going to have to keep an eye out on that in terms of is it going to be templates still we don't know um we're not sure, but it's just that's certainly a question. Now, it's really nice, I must say, because in the last two weeks, we've done these intelligence briefings for you guys. Every intelligence briefing has posed more questions than it answers. But I feel like now we've almost walked up to the top of the valley and we're peering down into the valley of version three and everything is just starting to make sense everything's starting to come together we're going to be able to play test these rules and there's going to be a battle report going up on sunday that integrates all of the release so you'll really apart from a couple of changes like he and so on and so forth and warlord have said they're going to have more changes and then not going to release all of them until the rule book release date so but we're going to be near as damn it and if you want to see these rules in action then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on sunday's battle report because if you're new to this channel one of our traditions here is we do a bolt action battle report for you guys every single sunday another reason why you, why you might want to uh, subscribe is i've got some very exciting news for you guys which is that warlord have confirmed that they're going to make sure that we have the capacity to release battle reports for you on release day so hit that subscribe button because we are going to be having a version 3 celebration week and from the first day and each day after that we are going to be releasing bolt action battle reports for you guys and other bolt action tactical content so whatever faction you collect fingers crossed you should be able to see that faction in action within a week if not on the first day of release so get your paintbrushes out get those howitzers or get those uh mortars ready to go and uh we're gonna have the content for you to paint your new v3 factions too so we'll all enjoy release week together so the final point i would make uh, about how version 3 is looking how it's coming together is that it's looking like a much more modern war game and what do i mean by this well 
Let's say, for example, like me, you enjoy a little bit of Battletech Classic. Now, that is a game that was released in 1985. It's old, let's put it that way. Now, if you want to look at the modifiers table, this is double-sided, but the modifier sheet for Battletech, I've just grabbed this, but if you can see, I just grabbed the camera on the tripod here, you can see there's, there's a lot of modifiers when you're playing. Battletech from 1985 and as we've seen over the decades some of us long beards the um, Rules have become more streamlined and the modern player doesn't have The time we live living busy lives. This is the 21st century. I want a rule set that I can play Easily with my smooth brain now some of you may complain and say this waters down the tactics of the game well i would very respectfully disagree with you i'll give you an example let's say for example that you were in playing second edition and you had this uh, 17 pounder that you wanted to charge down and the gunner's there he's got his ciggy in his mouth looking calmly down the sights and you've got a couple of infantry pretend this is a full squad for the sake of argument uh, and that they're not Tommies fighting Tommies, of course. Uh, who knows what this guy did. Now, um, a, a common tactic, an effective tactic, the tactic to shut down a field gun in version 2, is you get some pins on this guy, and after a couple of pins, essentially, he has to rally. He has to rally. There's no point in him shooting. He is going to miss. Because you get one shot. It's your only field gun. You only get that one shot. And... If you go down, oh, 17% of your ability to put out firepower was just thrown away if, you're playing a six, if you end up playing a six-turn game. Because you just, you go down. Do you know what? Oh, you've still got pins on you. You've still got those two or three pins on you. you your opponent, you know, oh, he's not shooting at anything else with this squad. Slings another pin on you. Now you're on four pins. You now, you have to rally. Okay, there's no choice in it now. Because... If you try, even if you passed that order check, you're going to be hitting on a six followed by a six. Well, that because you've just been pinned up. Well, now that's no longer the case. Not only is this not your only gun, you have potentially multiple um, heavy fire solutions, but you're also uh, not able to be as suppressed as effectively. These guys can put a pin you, they can put two pins in you. You can put five pins on you, but you're only taking a max of a minus one on that return fire. That means that you can't just grab a, few, a, a horde of veterans, one of my favorite tactics, I will hold my hands up and admit, and then just run down the opponent because statistically they're probably not going to get enough of those veterans before you close in on them and just wipe their army out. So what does this mean? Well, it means a big debuff to Brits or a rebalance of Brits, the classic British tactic of just going, right, four squads of Gurkhas, Staghound, uh, Stuart, couple of brain carriers, Piat, ram that straight up one side of the board, annihilate anything in its path, pin up whatever you want, pin up in front of your attack, pin up the units that could come over suppressed, your choice, whatever you like, because you've got that field artillery, you've got that artillery observer for free as well. And you can just uh, brazenly run down units because they've only got a couple of big hitters to fire back at you. They're probably going to miss with those. You've probably pinned them up enough. You've had an airstrike. Now, again, Brits, doesn't matter if you put three pins on that field gun. You can't just start running across the open. They are going to hit you. They are going to kill you. So um, old the old rushing across the open with hardcore units tactic, dead and gone. That is a big big deal as we said we always discuss the devil and the detail in these uh, intelligence briefings it's not just about the rules on paper it's about the implications and that is a huge one i am i'm gonna put it out there i feel like brit bias might actually be gone don't tell anyone that you heard it from me i think actually the americans might be the soup du jour <laughs> um because you know, the Yanks, they've got those heavy machine guns. 
They've got those tanks that all come with a bigger HE template, so uh, they're more effective at killing infantry than just getting pins and suppressing with the machine guns. You know, they can move and shoot without penalty, which is one of the remaining three negative modifiers. So they are basically, it's not that Yanks have one negative out of potentially three, four, five negative modifiers. There. So they're just slightly better. Now the Yanks are essentially 33% better at shooting than anyone else because they can move and shoot. Obviously only their infantry, I mean veteran Shermans with those gyros, ignore the move and shoot, just basically hitting on four ups all game, drive ups, shoot stuff on two ups, be my guest. Like I'm seeing Americans, and this is just prediction from Scholar here, maybe I'll be wrong, you can all laugh at me and lambast me in the comments in a few weeks but i feel if you want to be a power gamer in version three i would be buying some us units right now that that that's all i'm saying okay that's all i'm saying <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry it's not even out version three is not even out and i'm already giving it the advice that ruins the game <laughs> but what can i do i just see the rules and these things come to me so Yanks buffed, Brits descending, Yanks on the Ascendance, big guns on the Ascendance, vets no longer as OP as they used to be. Nice to be survivable, but you can't do whatever you like. Vets aren't an excuse to do what you want on the Volt Action Tabletop Battlefield. And that, they're the big headlines for me. It's a rebalancing of the game here. Okay? We've got each one of these releases, Stuart's out, Vets uh, sort of reduced, Brits reduced because their artillery support officer can't just like pin them up to the point where you can't take any effective fire. If you're playing a Brit now and you take those pins on the first turn, yeah, okay, so what? If you can, if you think you can pass that order check, then you take that shot at that Brit. Do you know what I mean? It's all about if, if it's if pins are all about the order checks now. It's not, they're not OP. And so pins as a mechanic reduced somewhat, watered down somewhat. There's some big, big, big changes here. But again, you know, it's all making sense. Those officers, now you're going to have a few more officers because you're going to have a few more platoons. And those few more officers are going to be more important because people are going to be focusing on pinning up units to stop them passing orders now that's the strategy of pinning up units to stopping them being able to shoot is less effective. So if you want to stop someone following orders, that's why you hammer them, not just to make their shooting minus three. So it's not a chain, it's not a watering down of the intricacies. It's just new things to be taken account of. And as we said, if you've got three or four guns facing off against you, you can't just spray and pray, okay? You're going to get hit. You're going to get killed. So you have to. You're going to have to come up with and think of some new strategies on how to take those artillery positions, how to take on that tank, how to counter that tank coming towards you, how to counter that infantry hut coming towards you. It's all. It's like it seems like it's going to be way, way more balanced. Apart from obviously the Yanks, they seem OP. Now, uh, now that's enough from me for the final section of the video let's hear from you guys you guys have been commenting like crazy um on all of our intelligence briefings over the last couple of weeks we've had some fascinating discussions so i'm just going to start grabbing some comments and reading them out for you so Arkai km he says he likes the new mmg rule he always likes the idea of seeing them on the board now we're going to get those mmgs and um Reduce the number of tank shots makes sense to him, although his SAS are crying because of the loss of assault on pistols. And, you know, I agree with you, bro. I've lost uh, assault on my partisans as well. But yeah, all in all, and I think essentially everyone's feeling pretty positive about um, the overall changes looking at the comment section. Next, we hear from Dario, one of our honorable channel members. And he says, not the bikes, he loves them. But uh, the death of Dakar tanks, hmm. So, 
He's just keeping an eye on things for now. He's not entirely convinced the DACA tanks are dead. Uh, Marzo P4480 says, The new MMG rule is very interesting. And he compliments me on my tank Panther tank painting. Very kind of you, sir. Um, Craig's Tidham3318 says, It will be an interesting change, but currently Germany has always been a bit robbed on their national traits rule. And it wasn't extra dice that was necessarily the issue. It's pins that need an update for people to take MMGs and LMGs. Well, now pins are less effective. So if they'd increased the pin ability on machine guns, it wouldn't have been as an effective burst as giving them an extra, sorry, that's the dog, giving them an extra hit and making that hit, giving them an extra shot and making that shot a lot more likely to hit. So giving them a buff on hits in the end has improve them further than giving them better pins now that we know the the, uh, the way the pin modifier works just can't it's massive that absolutely massive uh dice ghost once again comments that he's keeping his fingers crossed for a seven shot mmg for the germans and violet moon media um just says it all makes sense essentially you no longer get a modifier for small team you're more likely to cause hits. Um, you get more MGs, therefore you're more likely to get a pin, as I've said. So the MGs are getting that pin buff built in because you always take the pin regardless of cover save. So more shots, more likely to get that pin. So they're more effective at suppressing fire. I just love how all these rules are tying together. Wi-Fi Soldier 5076 says, hopefully we see HE improved or at least the ability to hit becomes easier. Well, Wi-Fi Soldier, uh, you, your wish has been granted. Although he then goes on to say, flamethrower tanks, will they be the new meta? And I hope you don't get that wish coming true, my friend, uh, because JP is a flamethrower addict. And if flamethrower tanks become, you know, he's, he doesn't need an excuse as it is. Let's put it that way. Uh, Tony Brooker 5059 keeps it simple. He just says, I love them. He loves the new rules. Well, Tony... Let us know what you think about this new release. Uh, are you like me where you just every release version 3 gets better and better? Or, you know, there's some people out there who aren't liking the new rules. And that's fair enough. It's your hobby. If you don't like them, that's your prerogative. But for me, I am buzzing. Still unsure, 7630 says the Dacus Stewart isn't dead. It'll never die. Simply put, if MGs get worse for armor, then they will get cheaper. He just, he, he cannot let go of the DACA Stuart. And I understand, man. I love my DACA tanks too. JP loves his DACA tanks more than anyone. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> just funny comment, isn't it? Um, now, one comment I do massively agree with is that half tracks are going to need a huge point drop to be worth it. Now, they weren't worth their cost before but now and i'm presuming they're talking about the hano mag crony kill 74 but um yeah hano mags are really really trash now really really trash yeah they're more likely to hit now they can put some pins out but they need a point to drop they've been just op when I, if i go to like a nice little local tournament and i face off against someone who's got a german mechanized list with with hano mags in it i just instantly know that that battle is going to be 50% easier, okay? Because they're just their points are just not efficient. Now, um, finally, we're going to say, uh, we're going to look at the other side of things. James P says he's really not a fan of the MMG change. Not all vehicles are equal. This is just a crude way to deal with a specific vehicle MMG issue. And for the historical accuracy in inverted commas, you could have added minus one to coaxial and pintle mounted, for example. Now I've just flicked through the comments there, guys. So I'm sorry if I've missed anyone out. However, we're going to reconvene next week. We've got more rules, special rules. And I think the special rules coming out last will really tie things together. We're going to start, start seeing things really make sense even more so than they do this week with those special rules so meet and set for this time next week chaps and we'll we'll discuss what comes out and also we'll discuss your comments down below do you love the new shooting rules what big winners and losers in terms of units do you see coming out of this uh, intelligence briefing 
I've just whizzed home from work, I've plugged my microphone in and I have got filming for you guys to get this information out hot off the press. So if I've missed something uh, in terms of the implications and the, the little details, then please do let us know and we can discuss it next week. So with all that being said, I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.